Hello and welcome. I'm Ahmed Asali and you're watching Dr. Sugar. Today's case is another case for station 5 in the MRCP PACES exam. So it's a clinical consultation and the case is ankylosing spondylitis. This is one of the important and frequently encountered cases in station 5. Right, let's get to it. We'll start with the scenario. Please note, ankylosing spondylitis is much more likely to present in men. So, the scenario reads, a 49-year-old gentleman presenting with lower back pain and is also telling you that recently they've been experiencing problems with breathing and they also have pain in their feet. To be honest, a middle-aged man coming in with lower back pain, it is most likely going to be ankylosing spondylitis. However, you do need to rule out important differential diagnoses. We'll mention them in a minute. Let's move on to history taking. As we said in the previous videos, do not waste too much time asking questions and it's best to incorporate your history taking with your clinical examination. However, to make the approach more systematic for you in the video, we'll start by history taking on its own. Make sure you start by asking all the questions you would ask for pain. When it started, how bad is it? Where does it radiate to? What makes it better? Is it better with walking or it's worse with walking? Is it associated with stiffness? When? What time of the day? And all the other questions that you would like to ask in someone presenting with lower back pain. Remember not to forget asking about involvement of nerves and symptoms that you could get in the lower limbs and the sphincters. Like we said in the previous video, most of the cases appearing in station 5 particularly those of a rheumatological origin or of an endocrinological origin, you want to ask about the disease itself and the system it affects, but you also need to ask about systemic manifestations or systemic involvement with the disease. Because the hallmark of ankylosing spondylitis is sacroiliitis, that's why you start with the lower back pain. Involvement of the chest, as the patient's been telling you they've been getting trouble breathing, this can be either a skeletal problem or it can be a proper lung problem. We'll leave that for a minute and we'll come back to it. Now move to the feet. The patient said I have pain in my feet. Very briefly ask few questions to pretend like you're asking questions about the pain in the feet because in reality that's not very important. That's just to tell you that the patient, if they have arthritis, so most likely it's going to be a seronegative arthritis. So they have ruled out rheumatoid arthritis for you right there. Now we're going back to the chest and to ask about involvement of the skeletal system in the chest. You could very briefly ask about whether the patient has noticed any deformity in their chest, their posture, their ability to do things. Make it a yes or no question and be quick. If you've done that, then just move on to the other systems. Three systems are very important. Ask about the heart, ask about the lungs, ask about the eyes. Because it can cause aortic regurgitation and it can cause mitral valve prolapse, make sure you ask about symptoms that can be associated with aortic regurgitation. It can also cause conduction defects, so make sure you ask them if they had a pacemaker inserted. Then for the lungs, it can cause fibrosis, so make sure you ask about symptoms related to that, like shortness of breath, etc, etc. Move on to the eyes, and we know ankylosing spondylitis is associated with anterior uveitis. So ask about symptoms that can be related to that. We know this disease can also be associated with amyloidosis, although it is very rare, but you don't want to miss someone on, say, renal replacement therapy, although it's unlikely to get someone on renal replacement therapy and they put him as an ankylosing spondylitis case. Now let's move on to examination. I'll repeat myself here and I'll say do your history taking and examination together. Start by asking a few questions, maybe up to three, in just history taking on its own when you start the consultation and then start examination and do history taking and examination together to save time. As the case was with history taking, you want to do tests for the disease itself or the skeletal system and particularly the spine and then you want to do tests for the skeletal system outside the spine and then you want to look for signs related to these systems that can be involved with ankylosing spondylitis. Most of the time the patient will be seated 
that's to hide any deformity they have. If you ask the patient to stand, if they have kyphosis, it becomes very clear. Another thing you can look for with a patient with ankylosing spondylitis is to do fleshes tests and that's to ask them to stand against the wall. Someone without a flexion deformity that happens in ankylosing spondylitis should be able to touch their occiput against the wall. Remember absence of this sign does not rule out the diagnosis. Probably the most accurate test to do is modified Schubert's test but you aren't expected to do that in the examination However, you can mention it and the logic behind it. You can examine the sacral region specifically for sacroiliitis, but that's something that you're likely to find if the patient has an active disease. And then just to rule out the most important differential diagnosis in such a case, which is psoriatic arthritis, look for other signs that you'd expect to find with someone with psoriasis, and that's looking at the nails, looking for any rash in the hairline, in the extensor surfaces. Now you have ruled out psoriatic arthritis. Another way to differentiate between psoriatic arthritis and ankylosing spondylitis is that psoriatic arthritis will cause asymmetrical involvement of the spine while ankylosing spondylitis will cause symmetrical involvement. Now leave the spine goes somewhere else in the skeletal system. Look at their feet. Check for Achilles tendonitis and plantar fasciitis. If they have tenderness they have it. If they don't have it, they may have swelling in the Achilles tendon insertion. If they don't have it, leave it, go to the next organ. Because it can affect the chest, make sure you check chest expansion. Then you'd move on to check for the extraskeletal signs. And since you're just checking chest expansion, why not have a listen to their chest? Check for apical fibrosis. Move on to the heart, listen for the murmur of aortic regurgitation and palpate and look for the scar of a permanent pacemaker inserted. You don't have to waste time trying to examine their eyes. If you've asked them about symptoms of uveitis, you've asked them, you can move on. This brings us to consultation. Now you need to tell the patient what you think the diagnosis is, explain to them why you think that is the disease they have, and tell them about the strategy to treat them. You need to tell them that the aims of the disease is to first control symptoms and also to limit the chance of developing disability. Make sure you say that physiotherapy is the cornerstone of the management. Now they may be trained to ask you that they've been on painkillers for a long time. Is there a risk to that? You obviously know the answer. Of course there is. Now when they ask you about treatments that can limit disability, you always have to be very honest with them. You'll have to tell them that their odds in preventing progression of their disease is not as good as someone with a different type of arthritis. Immune suppression does not work as well on ankylosing spondylitis. However, biological agents may help. But you need to reiterate to them that the most important part of their management is physiotherapy and you can also offer them occupational therapy. You need to mention that there is genetic propensity to have ankylosing spondylitis and therefore genetic counseling is very relevant. Now let's move on to discussion. An important question is the genetic basis of the disease. You have to mention to them the role of HLA B27. They will ask you, will you have to test for HLA B27 to make the diagnosis? The answer is no, the diagnosis is made radiologically and clinically. They may go back and ask you a very basic question and that's the definition of the disease and you want to answer by saying it's symptomatic sacroiliitis for more than three months that's associated with morning stiffness that improves with exercise and it's worse on rest. If they ask about systemic involvement then you only need to mention those things we've already mentioned in history taking and in examination. Eye, heart, lungs amyloidosis and the rest of the skeletal system. If they ask what peripheral joints are most likely to be involved if the patient has peripheral joint involvement that would be hip joints and knees. If the question is how to diagnose it, as we said earlier it's clinical radiological. Plain radiograph is the first radiological modality that you would use but if your x-rays are normal and you have high clinical suspicion you would do MRI. MRI is the most sensitive modality to diagnose sacroiliitis. Now if they ask you ankylosing spondylitis classes as one of the seronegative arthritis, what are the other seronegative arthritis? Your answer should be psoriatic arthropathy, enteropathic arthropathy and reactive arthritis. Remember the acronym for seronegative arthritis is P-E-A-R, PEAR. Now they may ask 
what biological agents you know that you can use for these patients. You can mention adalimumab and Intracept. Please always take into consideration revision of indications and contraindications of using biological agents in all patients with rheumatological and immunological disorders. This is it guys, that's ankylosing spondylitis for station 5 clinical consultation station in the MRCP PACES exam. If you think you've benefited from the video, please subscribe to the channel and also share the video with your colleagues so that everyone can benefit. You can also watch my other video for the clinical consultation station, station 5 of the MRCP PACES exam, that's Graves disease, through the link here. Best of luck with your revision and hope to see you soon in our next video. Thank you very much.